I I have a book that's coming out uh, June thirtieth. We both we both are, are getting ready to launch. You know, new new books, put books into the world. Uh, the like. very first chapter of my book, um, I talk about part of what inspired me to to do things like this, right? To to uh, it, one one thing that you and I have in common, and I think many people who are able to overcome adversity have in common is a strong sense of purpose, right? Because mm. it allows you to contextualize what is happening to you in a greater narrative, right? Yeah. So you don't, you're not like stuck in that thing and overwhelmed by it. You see mm. it as like this really cool twist in your story that exactly. allows for that allows for a larger greatness to happen on the back end, right? Okay. Um, and to build you up and for you to show people just how you know how important uh, it is to have that purpose because then you you get this inexhaustible drive. Right. You get this inexhaustible drive. Re <laughs> entry. It's it takes a special kind of person. This is what I've realized to get out and against all odds overcome and try to get on the other side. This is what I, this is for an example. So you get out. You can't get housing because they can't you can't hire that. No one wants to hire a felon. I mean, no one wants to allow a felon to rent a place. And I've, I know this to be true, to be true because I've went and for the purposes of my book and stuff like that, I've had to go and fill and I make six figures a year, great credit, all of that. They still deny me. Right. I have to live subpar in this city as a ex, as a returning citizen and successful. I can't go live downtown in one of those high rises. They won't let me, even if the credit and in, in the in the income is there. So housing is a big problem for felons. OK, I can't find gainful employment because most felons statistically don't doesn't ha don't have the the um, the education background to be able to get a nice job. So I have to settle for eight to nine, ten dollar hour jobs. OK, and then you got child support that don't that doesn't stop when you go to jail. They call it willful unemployment. Wow. So because I go to jail, those those the, the child support is, is is stacking up. So when I get out, I'm faced with all of this when I get out. Right. Who wants to get out and deal with that? You know, who the how hard it is to get out and to pick up the pieces with all of that against you. That's why people recidivate yeah. uh, uh, so quickly because yeah. you go back to what you know, because it's survival of the fittest. I mean, you got to make money. You got to take care of your kids and you got to make sure every and, the house is straight. And let's just keep it real. That would be overwhelming for the average person, right? Like, yes. you know, if, if you took the average person today who's like doing great in their job, you know what I mean? Socially well adjusted, no problems. And you like light switch. You said, OK, boom, right. start from here. Mm -hmm. And let's see how you can do. How you do, right? right. Exactly. Like right. that's not you, you, you. I mean, I don't know how you. I don't know how you return from that. You know what I mean? So, so right. actually, so let's let's use that to talk about transition pitfalls. Exactly. So that's why I started transition pitfalls because what I wanted to do because I went through it. I got out um, against all all of the institutions and systems that are put in place to keep a, a, a returning citizen down. I broke the walls on every one of them. I, I single-handedly built my life all over again. All right, from credit to uh, to trust uh, to successful businesses to for every portion of reentry, I've shattered the glass ceiling. Okay, and so I found it again. Um, experience is what you get when you don't get what you want, right? And so I'm a responsible for my experiences. And so what I wanted to do was use my experiences in a way that I can help other returning citizens. So transition pitfalls, the unspoken truth about your release. Uh, I've said, on, I talked to um, uh, Leadership Nashville. I, every year I speak at their Criminal Justice Day. I've been up there with them all from Project Return to you name them. We've been there to, uh, I've, I've, rub shoulders with these people. But the one thing I find I found is that people are not being truthful about reentry and and the institutions that are in place that that, that put red tape and put stumbling blocks in front of, uh, of people like me. And so transition pitfalls exposes all of that and, and gives people an option uh, to pick up the pieces to their life. And so I try to 
streamline the process of reentry for them. And I basically break down every, whether it be finances, whether it be you want to obtain your a part in yourself, or you want to get expungement, um, because all of those things help you to get a better job, to, to be able to obtain housing, you know? And so I wanted to streamline that process and I found it uh, odd that no one has done it yet. <laughs> so with that, let's get into a discussion about your new book. Um, yeah. I want to hear, I want to hear about this because I, I actually haven't heard about, about the book. So, so, so talk to me about the book. So I'm like this little low key geeky type of dude, but nobody <laughs> knows because I don't have the big elaborate uh, vernacular and I'm not the, I don't have the degrees and Vanderbilt sitting on my wall, but I'm very intelligent. Right. And so I, and my team wanted to do something because everybody knows me for the felon who's doing good. Let's yeah. just be honest. We know that story. We know that story. Right, right. But what they they don't know the bid they they really I don't brag about all the properties I own. Like I own I own over 10 properties, right? I run a whole real estate management and investment company, right? Um I create. I'm a creator. I'm a visionary. I I I'm one of those people, I look at some, I, in this building, I, I built this whole building. I built it out by myself under the ground. Nobody knew, nobody did a write up on it, but I'm, I'm good at starting businesses and starting things. And so with this book, I wanted to start a conversation, an important one, because we all have relationship issues with people. We all, us as a, as a, the black culture, we, we see something wrong with, okay, Marcus, I do something for you and you do something back. We call that tit for tat. We don't like that. Right. But other cultures believe in scratching each other's back with no problem. Hey, Marcus, I'm going to do you this favor. And then you ask me for a favor. I say, okay. And then you say, well, I, I'm a won't when, it, when it's your time, I need you to do it for me, you know? And so this book is called Quid Pro Quo, The Laws of Reciprocity. And there's laws in dealing with people, right? And so we need to be okay with understanding that I can ask you for something and it's okay for me to expect something back in return. There has to be, when you're valuable, you have to, you don't want someone draining your energy, right? You have to bring something to the table as well. And so that's why it's mutuality. We're, we're in agreement, right? You come 50, I come 50. And so we talk, we dive into that, man. Oh, we dive into it deep. And then we talk about people that are connected to you versus people that are attached to you, right? And so you have to protect your energy. You have to understand the, those people that are destined to be with you, who are tied to your destiny. But then you got those people to just kind of come along for a little while and then they fall off, right? And so how, how to know those people, how to spot those people. And so it's dealing with communication. It's dealing with, um, you know, uh, not carrying dead weight too long, knowing how to say no, knowing when to back out of a situation, you know, and I think it's important, man. It's, it's going to be one of my best, my best pieces of work yet. Look, man, you just, you just, uh, you just said a lot, man, because there is, I'm looking forward to this book. Because there is something that's always there amongst people that not just are successful, okay, mm -hmm. but succeed beyond what is expected of them, okay? And I think you just really tapped into it, right? Mm -hmm. Which is they understand how to navigate relationships. And that is not a one size fits all thing, but there are some laws. There is a framework. Yeah. There is yes. a framework, right? For how you engage different people and, and largely dependent on how they engage you, 